FSR4 has changed the conversation entirely around upscaling on AMD GPUs. With older versions of the technology, there were only a couple of configurations that were potentially worth using, mostly at 4K. If you had a 1440p or 1080p display, FSR 2.2 and FSR 3 weren't exactly the best from a quality standpoint. But now that FSR 4 is much more usable, what are the best settings to use while gaming? Should you stick largely to the quality mode or experiment with lower modes like balanced or performance? That's what we'll be exploring in today's video. I'll be going through a range of different examples at 4K, 1440p and 1080p, all captured on a Radeon RX 9070 XT at a locked 60fps. Like our previous upscaling examinations, various settings such as motion blur and chromatic aberration have been disabled, and the same sharpening setting, usually zero, has been employed for all the examples. So let's get into it after this. Today's video is brought to you by Insta360 and their Link2 and Link2C 4K webcams. Both models feature a high-performance half-inch sensor delivering crisp 4K video with an AI-powered audio algorithm that provides pretty great sound quality via the built-in microphone. Building on the original Link, the Link 2 series includes AI tracking for individuals and groups, auto-framing and gesture controls, which are pretty neat. Check it out. It also now offers modes such as customizable backgrounds, bokeh, even like a natural blur, so it really adds versatility to every use case. The Link 2, which is the one we're using right now, is equipped with a gimbal, which is perfect for dynamic use cases like teaching or demos, while the Link 2C omits the gimbal, which leans more into the conference call space. With various AI features, both new and improved on offer here, and a very user-friendly desktop app experience, achieving the perfect presentation for you really couldn't be much simpler. So if you'd like to get your hands on one of these new Insta360 Link 2 series cameras, check out the links in the description for a special Amazon Prime Day offer. Like we saw with DLSS4, FSR4 is fantastic at eliminating TAA blur in motion. This helps to preserve full texture detail as you move around the game world and stops obvious occurrences where games become instantly less sharp when you start moving. With FSR4, this benefit applies to all of the settings, so whether you choose to play using quality, balanced or performance, you won't see anywhere near as much blur as previous versions of the technology. It also tends to create a better overall presentation than many games built in TAA solution. In most situations, including gaming at lower resolutions, there is no blur penalty from turning down the FSR4 mode. That is to say, if you game at 1440p quality or 1440p performance, the level of texture detail and overall blur is pretty similar. Occasionally, I saw some slight artifacts at the lowest render resolutions, for example, 1080p performance mode, but if anything, games get more pixelated at lower modes instead of becoming just blurrier. So if the main reason you've stayed away from using lower upscaling modes in the past has been an increase in the overall blur while gaming, with FSR 4, you should definitely experiment with the performance mode at 4K and the bounce mode or even performance mode at 1440p and 1080p. Stability is one of the weaker aspects to FSR 4, though still a significant improvement from FSR 3. This is one of the areas that can be degraded when using lower modes, but perhaps not as much as you might expect. You can kind of split this into two categories. Elements on screen that are stable using the quality mode are quite likely to also be stable using the performance mode with no real degradation. We've seen a bit of that examining textures and blur already. But if an element is showing a bit of instability using the quality mode, whether that's sizzling, aliasing or whatever, it's probably going to be a little worse using a lower mode like performance. The level to which this is noticeable depends on the resolution at 4K. Honestly, there were many times where the level of instability in the quality, balanced and performance modes were quite similar, so dropping to performance may not be a huge reduction in stability. At 1440p and 1080p, quality and balanced were often quite similar, but performance could suffer a bit in terms of the finest details, pixel level wires and lines, that sort of thing. This is one of those settings where if you're super sensitive to aliasing, you probably won't want to drop it below the highest mode, but if it's not that distracting to you, then performance at 4K will only be a minor downgrade. The other thing to be aware of is that I did spot some situations where the balanced mode was more stable than the quality mode, a weird quirk of FSR 4 that we don't see with other upscaling technologies. This didn't happen in every game or even in every scene, but occasionally you can improve stability moving from quality to balanced. And this is especially true at 1440p, where I felt this effect was most noticeable. So 1440p balanced mode can end up being the best choice. 
It can also occur at 4K and 1080p, but seems less likely. So at 1080p for stability, quality is often the best choice, whereas at 4K, you can go as low as bounced or performance depending on your tolerance for these issues. Disocclusion is a pretty simple situation. Using a lower upscaling mode increases the visibility of disocclusion artifacts. FSR4 generally handles disocclusion pretty well, especially at higher resolutions. So dropping from 4K quality down to 4K performance isn't a huge issue visually. But if you look closely in some examples like The Last of Us with Joel's swaying head, or a gun in Hunt Showdown, you can see that the performance mode has more pixelation as moving objects disocclude the background. The quality mode provides the cleanest presentation across all of the tested resolutions. Now at 1440p, I think the biggest issues are when you start to use the performance mode. Balanced and quality hold up well, but performance is just a bit too pixelated and blurry in my opinion. Plus in titles like Hunt, you also have to deal with aliasing along the edges of objects like the gun you're carrying. The same applies at 1080p, but in an even more noticeable way. So I think most gamers will want to stick with balanced at the absolute minimum, perhaps even quality, depending on how noticeable these artifacts are in the game you're playing. And it can be a game by game decision as some titles are less susceptible to these problems. In Spider-Man 2, I thought disocclusion differences between the modes were harder to spot, which makes even the performance mode viable at 1440p. Similar can be said in Horizon Zero Dawn where this really isn't an issue. It's something you'll need to experiment with in each game you play. With FSR 4, hair quality is only slightly degraded between the different modes. At 4K in particular, there is very little difference moving between the quality and performance modes, and it's unlikely you'll spot any serious hair artifacts in motion. This is a stark difference to FSR 3, where even a small drop in mode can have serious quality implications. If you look super closely, yes, the 4K performance mode does have slightly grainier hair than quality, but all modes are sufficient here. At lower resolutions, I tended to find that the performance mode was noticeably worse than the quality mode in hair quality, as seen in this Horizon Zero Dawn example. A bit more grain and pixelation in the image that you don't get on the higher modes, so at minimum for 1440p or 1080p gaming, I'd use the balance mode. This of course will depend on the game being played, titles with less hair on screen or less hair motion will hold up better. Particle quality is a combination of two components, the resolution and stability of the particles, and the disocclusion that occurs behind them in motion. FSR4 handles the disocclusion part pretty well, as we can see in this Horizon snow test. At 4K, there is not a huge difference between the grass behind the snow in the quality and performance modes. If you look closely, performance is a little lower resolution, but not by much. At 1440p though, the performance mode does become a bit grainier, so in this situation, I would recommend going no lower than balanced. In terms of particle resolution, this can also be impacted between modes, and the performance mode tends to have more particle aliasing than the higher modes across various resolutions. This could be a reason to stick to balanced or quality in titles with lots of confetti or similar particles. In The Last of Us Part 1 Spore Test, quality also produced a noticeably higher particle count, with each particle being a finer, higher detail version compared to the lower modes. If you want that nice, crisp particle detail, then with FSR4, you need to stick to quality upscaling. Transparency quality isn't something you'll have to worry too much about when lowering FSR4 upscaling modes, especially at high resolutions there is very little difference in the quality of holograms, fire effects and similar things when dropping from quality to performance. This is a big upgrade over previous versions of FSR which started off poorly and only got worse in this area. If anything, there is a small drop in transparency resolution when upscaling at lower resolutions like 1080p, meaning the performance mode can either be blurrier or more aliased than the quality mode at times, but this aspect of upscaling isn't a deciding factor in what mode you should use. FSR4 handles foliage pretty well, though it's still an area that can suffer from a quality loss at lower modes. The reduction in grass quality is one of the more noticeable issues, though this is more the case at lower resolutions like 1440p and 1080p, where dropping below the quality mode progressively makes grass grainier and more aliased. 1440p balanced isn't too bad, even though it appears worse than quality. 1440p performance is definitely degraded to the point where it's obvious the render resolution is lower, and 1080p below the quality mode isn't the best either. At 4K, I felt that quality and balanced both looked pretty good and performance is only slightly worse. Now this does depend on the sorts of grass that you see in games. The worst type is anything dense that moves in wind. That combined with player motion can be quite problematic. When grass is more static, like you see in The Last of Us, FSR 4 holds up much better and lower modes are more suitable. So again, this is something that you'll need to optimize on a game by game basis.
FSR4 can also struggle a bit with tree quality, though it depends on the circumstances. Distant trees lose a bit of detail at lower modes, again more noticeable at lower resolutions in a way that DLSS4 doesn't. However, for the most part, there isn't a huge quality loss between the various modes, and leaf quality is quite good. This area of upscaling holds up better than with grass. The only other potential issue is fine tree branches, which become less stable at lower modes, even at 4K. For the finest branches, anything with near pixel level lines, the lower the mode the more aliasing there is. For people super sensitive to these artifacts this might rule out the performance mode at lower resolutions in particular. Fence quality relies on two areas, disocclusion and fine detail reconstruction. FSR4 handles disocclusion pretty well. However, fine detail reconstruction does suffer using lower modes, and that's something that we see in the difficult Spider-Man 2 overlapping fence test. While the background behind the fences is preserved pretty well, using lower modes like balanced or performance reduces the quality of the fence itself and makes it more prone to aliasing. This is especially true at lower resolutions like 1440p, where using the performance mode is noticeably blurry than the quality mode. In The Last of Us, we also see how FSR4 handles a different sort of fence. There are stability issues in all of the modes, but the performance mode is more prone to pattern artifacts than the quality mode by a small amount. Really though, there aren't significant differences between each of the presentations, even when we look at 1080p, which is a little different to DLSS4, where the lower modes had more noticeable differences in this sort of test. What you won't see much of is a difference in image quality while stationary. There is really no point comparing upscalers in this way, as every mode is able to accumulate data over many frames and resolve a high quality image. The performance mode is therefore just as good for screenshots as the quality mode or even native FSR4 rendering. However, standing still is not how you play most games, so it's important to move around a bit when deciding what upscaler settings are right for your gaming session. The results when comparing the three main FSR4 quality modes are pretty similar to what we saw a couple of weeks ago when assessing DLSS4 across its quality modes. In a lot of scenarios, there isn't a huge difference between the modes, especially when gaming at 4K, which makes the balanced and even performance modes viable at times. I know a lot of people set and forget the quality mode when upscaling these days, but I think with these latest AI-based upscalers, it's worth experimenting with lower settings to get an additional performance boost. FSR4 is resistant to TAA blur across the three main modes regardless of the resolution used, so the performance mode isn't blurrier than the quality mode in most games. This is wildly different to FSR3 and FSR2.2, where turning down the performance mode often made the visual quality atrocious. Stability does get worse at lower modes, so it's not always the case that the performance mode looks the same as quality, but this usually presents as more grain, more aliasing, some low resolution artifacts instead of the entire screen getting blurred and smeared. Lower FSR4 modes also tend to reduce fine detail reconstruction, grass quality and particles compared to higher modes, and these reductions are more noticeable at lower output resolutions like 1440p. Disocclusion also becomes more obvious at lower modes, though less so than with DLSS4. However, things like hair and transparencies hold up pretty well, and we even saw a few interesting situations where stability was improved using the bounce mode instead of quality. Different games show these artifacts in different ways, and it depends on the game as to how noticeable a particular artifact is. Disocclusion is more likely to occur in a third-person game with a lot of character movement, grass quality issues will be more prevalent in titles set in outdoor environments, and in some titles you just never run into issues with fences or hair because those elements aren't common in the game. This means the best FSR4 mode can vary depending on the game itself and how noticeable you find these artifacts. As a general rule of thumb though, I think the balanced mode at 4K is the best option for most situations, and I would lean towards the quality mode at both 1440p and 1080p. There are some games where the 4K performance mode and 1440p balanced modes look really good, so I wouldn't rule those out either, but I would generally steer clear of the performance mode at lower resolutions, as some artifacts become much more noticeable compared to balanced or quality upscaling. These recommendations factor in the additional performance you gain from using lower quality modes. Typically the higher the mode, the better the visual quality, though this isn't always the case with FSR4. But when you consider each step down in FSR4 mode provides around a, say, 6-12% to performance improvement, there are times when that performance uplift outweighs the visual quality change. This is especially true with lower tier graphics cards that are more GPU limited and tend to struggle to output high frame rates. Just make sure that if you are CPU limited that you're not doing pointless upscaling. If you see no performance improvement switching FSR4 from quality to balanced, you're probably CPU limited, or at the very least aren't being limited by render resolution, in which case don't bother using balanced or lower upscaling modes in an attempt to chase more frames. 
So anyway, that's it for this look at FSR4 quality modes. If you're interested in supporting the channel and the independent testing that we do, then please consider signing up to the Hard Runbox Patreon. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some pretty cool benefits. We've got monthly live streams, Discord chat. Uh, what else? We've got BTS content, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.